Hello there, this is Wumble Lombardi, and welcome to every episode of SMG4 Season 2 Reviewed. Since my Season 1 video went over smoothly, I'll be doing this as a regular series on the channel. I've taken notes on how to improve the production quality, like writing better scripts or doing more with the editing as well, so I'm ready to present to you this review. Season 2 was interesting to watch as I barely remember a lot of these episodes. I will say for starters, that I have more to say about this season than the first one. Same standards apply here. Episodes can be either good, enjoyable, funny, or anything else, meh, not bad, but also not good either, or just a mix of the two qualities, or Scum 64, bad, annoying, poorly put together, that kind of fun stuff. Season 2 has a total of 50 episodes, so we might be here for a while. Those 50 episodes contain everything from Poisoned Computer to Befriend the End. Obviously, I'll be talking about episodes and what they have in store, so if you haven't watched Season 2 yet, spoiler alert. Anyways, without further introductions, let's get into the reviews. Episode 50, Poisoned Computer. Mario spills poison on SMG4's computer, so he has to find a new one. This episode feels a lot like losing your N64, where Mario's dumbass re-breaks something belonging to his friend, and now he has to go find something new. This did feel like a better episode, however, so I'll give it a good rating. Time travel is an actual element of this story, and while it did feel disjointed at the end, and had less of a focus on the computer, it overall had a better conclusion than you losing your N64. I did enjoy that scene with Mario pretending to look for a computer in front of SMG4 as well. You'll hear this a lot in this video, but this takes an earlier episode's plot and does better things with it. Episode 51, How Mario Was Born SMG4 and Mario tell the story of how Mario came to be. So this is something like an origin story for Mario, which, hey, it's about time we get something like that. I'm sure this story will be well put together and told in a coherent manner. Yeah, this, uh, isn't it. There were a couple funny moments, like using Rural Britannica for a shot of Tokyo. That got a good laugh out of me. But most of the episode was just weird. A pretty early Scum 64. You can't have the first several minutes of your origin story just be Mario interjecting his stupid phrases and twists over and over again. It makes the whole thing very confusing to follow, and by the time you get a good portion of the way in, you just want Mario to shut up. And then there's that weird part of Mario technically being Luigi's mother, which throws off the pacing of the story even more. And that doesn't even begin to describe all the shit jokes here, which, trust me, since this is a baby-themed episode, there are a lot of them. Episode 52, Brother Love. Luigi gets a crush on Daisy and needs Mario's help. This feels like a sequel to Charming Peach from Season 1, except this time it's Mario doing the advice part. It... Definitely shows its age, but overall it's a good episode. There were lots of good gags like the RAR running gag, or Mario imagining Luigi getting kissed. The momentum kind of sputtered out towards the end, however, as more could have been done with a kidnappy plot and whatnot, but other than that, this is a decent episode. But 53, Super Mario 64 Halloween Special 2011. When Mario takes a cursed mustache, zombies start to arise. My favorite part is that this episode does an actual zombie plot. Real zombies in an episode's plot. With suspense. And they getting trapped inside a building trope. Finally. And thankfully, this episode delivers. It's a good episode. It has a lot of jokes that hit well, and also uses the plot in a much better way than Castle Jumping did. Episode 54. Mario takes the idiot test. Mario takes a test to determine if he's an idiot. Hey guys, do you want to see the same joke over and over again for five minutes? You don't? Well, this episode might not be for you then. Yeah, this is an easy meh. The main joke told throughout the entire episode is, hey, Mario's an idiot. It gets very predictable, very fast. The only highlight I could think of is Mario trying to focus. Thankfully, this is only a short, so it's not bad or annoying. It's just really, really boring. Episode 55, War of the Fat Italians 2011. Mario and SMG4 do battle after they prank one another. 
so this is how that miniseries started, huh? This episode was an enjoyable way to introduce this staple of the channel, so it gets a good for me. My favorite part would have to be the climax in how Mario and SMG4 resolve it, with Mario setting their rivalry aside to save him. It's nice to see, and an overall nice episode. Episode 56, SMG4 vs. SMG3. When a doppelganger steals SMG4's videos, he and Mario try and get back at him. Now, this, I feel, is now true recolor era in the channel. We get so many new characters here, from new allies like MCG and FM, to a real, true villain in SMG3. I personally don't have that big of an issue with recolors in these early videos, honestly, as it provides an easy way to have character variety in a more primitive era. Now, you gotta do it right, and this wasn't executed perfectly. Barring a few of them, lots of these recolor characters come off as just SMG4 in different clothes. Laymen for Mario to bounce off of, but doesn't shy away from expressing a bit of stupidity for comedic relief. Still, it's interesting to see these new characters, and SMG4 vs SMG3 is a good episode to have these guys debut. I know hindsight is 2020, but it really feels refreshing to have a recurring villain and not just a one-off like earlier episodes had, like Evil X or Scatman's Ghost throughout most of Scatman's Revenge. Episode 57 Operation G-A-Y After returning his card, SMG4 and X uncover an evil secret of Luigi's. Once again, this episode takes the plot point of clones, as in from Four Clones, One Italian, and actually does more with it. We get the trope of a character trying to find out who's the clone and who's the original. We get the other characters finding out what the clones are up to. It's a good episode, but I am noticing that we are getting quite a lot of new characters in this short of a time span with the reintroduction of Bot from Italian Kidnapping. He does feel like he plays a more substantial role here, however, so it's not that it's bad, it's just something that I'm noticing. Episode 58, The Switcheroo Overalls. To ease tensions in the friend group, SMG4 and the gang switch clothing to feel what it's like. Here we get yet another episode which involves characters quote-unquote turning into other characters. SMG4 vs. SMG3 had identity theft, Operation Gay had clones, and now this has characters swapping clothes. Here, it's not quite done as well as the others, as I'm feeling a meh on this one. The jokes are really hit or miss, as there can be good ones like with Toad being a rock and MCG punching everywhere. It's cool seeing the character traits carry over onto characters that aren't used to it. It goes both ways, however, as the shenanigans with FM and the old guy that chases him aren't as funny. There also isn't really conflict outside of that old man. Nothing really happens that makes these characters gain a better perspective of everyone else, and people just want to switch back because they feel like it. I think this episode really would have benefited from a bit of introspection on the end of the characters. Episode 59, Mini Italians. X, Mario, and SMG4 accidentally eat a mini-mushroom. Wow, and here is another episode which involves characters transforming and people not recognizing them. I'll give it a good, but just barely. It has a nice concept, but I feel more could have been done with it. Having these characters shrink just feels arbitrary since they only go through regular-sized obstacles. This feels more like they're invisible or something. Had Mario and the others go through something small, like crawling around in a desk or throughout a room where they can go places they can now reach, the whole mini part would have felt more important. Still, there are some good jokes, it's just that the idea of shrinking isn't used to its fullest potential here. Episode 60, Awkward Weddings. Mario and Luigi give love potions to Peach and Daisy, but the princesses fall in love with SMG4 and X instead. Here's one of the more interesting plots in this season. It's not super funny, but I think it still gets a good for me just because it's so intriguing. Love potions are nothing new in terms of these more silly plots, but it's rare to see something involving weddings too. We also get introduced to yet another new character, Ruffman or RM for short. He seems to be more unique than the others as his hyperactivity is more integral to his character, as opposed to someone like MCG who no doubt has an interesting quirk, but it can feel a bit on the gimmicky side in a lot of the episodes. Awkward Weddings isn't as funny as it is interesting, but I still like it. 
Episode 61, The Crazy Fighters. When a crazy guy takes over the castle, FM trains everybody to take it back. Before, my feelings were pretty mixed on this episode. I wasn't quite aware of the characters and what they were up to, and it wasn't funny to me back then. Now, however, it's a really good episode. For starters, the main conflict gets a lot of screen time, only spending about a minute getting established. This gives the training segments so much time to flourish. One could say too much time, but I don't mind it. We get a few fourth wall breaks and some funny jokes, but the part I loved the most about it is FM actually plays a major role in this episode. His name is Fighting Mario, for crying out loud. It's cool to see a character's special trait affect the story in such a way. Which brings us to my favorite section, the big fight scene at the end. Not only does it last for a decent amount of time, it keeps my attention. All these different characters trying to take down the crazy guy, plus some neat looking editing when FM and X teleport around punching him, it's a pretty damn satisfying ending to this episode. One of the highlights of season 2 for me. Episode 62, 99% Idiot. Mario loses his memory after Toad throws a pillow at him. This, at first glance, seems like just a regular amnesia episode, but it's not. Mario is said to have lost his memory, but he's just marginally stupider than he normally is. It's not that big of an issue, but still. Something that also felt underutilized was the conflict between SMG4 and X. We could have had some sort of dual plot thing with Mario being an idiot and not remembering much, while SMG4 and X argue over how they want to treat Mario. SMG4 obviously wants payback on Mario for all the times he's been annoying and whatnot, but since X is relatively newer, he doesn't hate Mario as much. There could have been a stronger conflict between the two throughout the episode. Something that pushes a 99% idiot into the good category, however, is the fight scene. It's funny seeing Mario inadvertently beat SMG3 just by being an idiot, and the jokes here are nice too. I loved the line where SMG3 tells Mario he has to versus him, and Mario saying he doesn't know how to sing. That joke flew over my head the first watch through. The last part of the episode truly saved it from being a meh. Episode 63, Crystal Funhouse. SMG4 and the gang go exploring to find a secret crystal room which transports them into a different world. Here's another really fun episode. It doesn't take itself too seriously as the weird factor works wonders. It gets to the point relatively quickly and all the episode callbacks were cool. Funnily enough, I think this episode does more justice to the Forgotten Door than the episode entirely dedicated to it. It'd be good enough with just the recolors trying to make their way through this nightmare dimension, but we also get a neat little side plot with Mario and Luigi playing Star Wars. It's nothing laugh out loud funny, but subplots, even minor ones, I find to be pretty neat. It gives a sense of normalcy between these stretches of absolute craziness. A good episode. Barring the slowed down merry-go-round music, which does get pretty annoying. Episode 64, Hunt for the Hero's Clothes. Mario has to find his clothes. Fun fact, this is the first episode where the Mario 64 HUD isn't present for a majority of the time. I thought it was earlier, but I guess my brain tuned it out. This episode has much lower stakes than the others, and it really shows. The story doesn't feel messy, it just has a lot of twists and fakeouts. It takes a while for the search to really start, and even then there are issues. Kimba Bomb's interaction was funny, but of course Mario loses the overalls immediately. Same thing with the climax with Bowser. It feels like Dupless could have played a bigger role here, but he just kinda stops doing things after he throws the overalls. It's a meh, as these problems aren't huge, and I can't forgive its attempts at being a more silly episode. Episode 65, Super Mario 64 Christmas Special, 2011. Mario is the only one who's in the Christmas spirit, and he has to save Christmas. This plays out like a typical Christmas-themed episode, and it works really well. Mario seems to be the only person around the castle to really believe in Santa. Because of that, He's eager to help Santa out when he needs it the most. Normally it's the opposite way, and it's someone who doesn't believe in Santa who has to help him save Christmas, but here, it's more like Mario was getting rewarded for having the spirit, which is a nice change of pace. It's a simple episode, but also a good one, as there are plenty of jokes scattered around. Episode 66, 
Bowser and the Nightmare Stone. SMG3 and Bowser team up to send people into a nightmare realm. I like this dynamic. SMG3 is more of a serious villain. Bowser isn't. It's cool to see the two try and work together, and the scenes with them are really enjoyable here. The main parts do feel a bit similar to Crystal Funhouse, however, just turned up a notch. There's this rock that has magical powers that transports characters into a different sort of world. Mario and Luigi are in a group separate from the others. SMG3 is involved somehow, and we even get a new character introduced that helps save the heroes. Only big difference is the Mario Brothers are actually involved in the main story, Bowser teams up with SMG3, and we don't find out the identity of the guy who saves the gang. I'll give it a good, but only by a hair, as it seems really similar to something just three episodes ago. Episode 67, Rich Glitch. Mario hits the lottery and becomes a rich jerk. As you can probably tell, given the premise and even a reference earlier on in the episode, this is a new take on Toad Gold. It does pretty much everything differently. For starters, Mario is the one that gets so much money, and I gotta say, his craziness isn't done as well as Toad. With Toad getting rich, you can kind of understand where he'd come from, given how he's been treated. Mario is dumb, sure, but he only seems to be acting slightly more irrational than he already does. The only difference between it is sometimes he says something really random. Second, we see more of Mario's life being rich than Toad, and it does seem more gradual. Granted, it's still not a lot of screen time, but the scenes that involve Mario are more significant. First, Steve gets rich, and that little joke of Mario giving SMG4 an old man does a good job at hinting at how Mario is getting greedy. Then we get Mario kicking everyone out, which, hey, comes naturally after introducing that old man joke earlier. This obviously leads to the next part, where the planning, phase, and execution is done much better than in Toad Gold. It's not a SMG4 and friends sneak into the castle plot, there's a bit more to it. Yeah, the part with the boo felt very filler-like, but it still leads to people being sneaky. The plot knox also had a bit more to be desired, as I don't think it compares to Toad Gold's ridiculous ending, but overall, these elements make for a good episode, and definitely one that does the character suddenly becomes a rich trope well. Episode 68, Orbical Adventures. Mario and Luigi need to find an orb to break a pipe curse. Good god, this episode feels longer than it actually is. This has a lot in common with Season 1, as it's just Mario and Luigi roaming around the world looking for something. It also has a very pointless plot that does the stupid, the thing you were looking for, you didn't actually need plot twist. But it does it even dumber, with the Rock Wizard apparently being the one to tell the brothers the journey was useless in the first place, after being pretty much non-existent throughout the entire Secret Lair scene. While there were some funny parts like with Bowser or the hobo in the lair, it's not enough to save this from a scum 64. 69. Wallets and Dinosaurs. Yoshi steals Mario's wallet. This is another fairly low stakes seeming episode, and while it's sometimes funny, it still gets a meh for me just because of how disorienting it is. Mario's antics trying to get Yoshi are funny and cool, but the parts where he supposedly goes to hell and also Yoshi's fake death just don't fit in. It's a romp, sure, but it's only just an okay one. Episode 70, Desert Heads. Mario ventures out into the desert. So one thing I really found cool about this episode is just the setting. The opening few minutes were cool seeing Mario by himself exploring the desert. If it was kept to that, a simple journey throughout most of the episode, I think it would have been fine. Have Mario slowly go crazy from the heat and a lack of water, maybe flesh out the silly conflict between him and his camel too. Unfortunately, it doesn't stick to Mario exploring the desert. It's a scum 64. Mario drinking poison from the oasis felt like it could have led to something, but he ends up getting captured by the bandits anyways, so the wandering around, with the exception of the cactus part, felt kind of pointless. And we haven't even gotten to the second half of the episode, which turns into a game show that's secretly evil. The whole desert aspect goes out the window for the last half of this episode, only really being present aesthetically. The game show just comes completely out of left field, as did X and SMG4 rescuing Mario. It feels kinda rushed and makes for a weird viewing experience, and not in a good way. Episode 71, The Babysitters. 
A mysterious baby shows up at the castle, but this is no ordinary baby. So there are a few episodes every season that feel like they have some added weight, and this is one of them. It's the longest episode yet, and I think ever, and it really needed the time. There's a lot that happens, and while a normal episode would feel rushed with all these parts, establishing the baby, making jokes with it, the brothers kind of chasing it around, and the fight scene, here each one feels fleshed out to a decent degree. It's more of a suspenseful episode than the first couple of minutes would have you believe, and that's fine. This is a pretty decent episode, and I think it uses its concept well, which is a nice break from the frustrating waste of potential of a couple episodes this season. Episode 72, Breaking Walls. Mario and the gang have fun with the viewers. Whoa, new font. Anyways, this is a pretty good episode. Fairly low stakes, yes, but that's fine. The conflict is just a way to get more of those jokes out of Mario and SMG4 exploring YouTube. It's simple, and it does a lot with the idea of both breaking the fourth wall and the YouTube theme. Episode 73, The Mushroom Mafia. Mario gets involved with the Mafia. Mushroom Mafia is in the awkward position of being both really interesting and yet also dull. While not a lot of jokes stick and it has a very underwhelming conclusion, the situations that Mario is in are just fascinating. It has a good idea, just poor execution, and for that, I'm giving it a map rating. By the time the last hit is introduced, it's so late in the episode that we don't quite get enough time. It's not even a climax or a fight scene, it's just Mario outsmarting the boss. Maybe if we got more good jokes in the latter half, this would be good, but for now, it's just okay in my view. Episode 74, Me Channel Teleport. Mario teleports. Not much to say except it's a good short. It's a silly little thing synced to music, you can't really do much wrong here. Gotta say too, the cuts at around the 18 second mark where Mario's on those falling platforms is satisfying to watch. Episode 75, Clono Mario. Mario finds a clone machine. Yet again, we have a clone themed episode. This kinda goes all the internet however, with the clone machine trope and the evil clones. Lots of the scenes involving their chaos are some of my favorite parts. I also really like how SMG4 incorporated all these different locations, which have their own unique take. The forest has Mario and Luigi getting lost and chased by clones. The tree area has that funny interaction with the tree, and the snowy mountain has, I guess, the conclusion? Whatever it is, this episode is a good one. Only complaint is that the clone's main differentiator, the lack of an M on the hat, isn't consistent, but that seems to just be a mishap. Episode 76, Thugger Hugger. A burglar breaks into the castle, and SMG4 chases him about. Why does this episode exist? I mean, it has a few good jokes sprinkled, but also some not-so-okay ones as well. Other than that, this is an oddly serious episode, which doesn't automatically mean I don't like it, but this ends up as a Scum 64 episode. Half of it is the chase scene, and the other half is the confrontation. The chase scene is okay, but it drags in a few spots, like DP going through doors or the basement joke. And the confrontation scene is even worse. We don't get much time at all with DP the person and not the burglar. So this other recolor is introduced, who doesn't really have many traits except he robs people out of necessity, which, hey, that's interesting. Except for the fact he also tried to kill SMG4. The serious tone of the flashback is totally undermined by the next line that TP says, saying that he robs for fun. So what is it? Is he doing this out of necessity or because he's a kleptomaniac? If it is because he needs it, why did he feel the need to try and knife SMG4? And if he is doing crimes for the thrill of it, why is it only hinted at in that one line of dialogue? After all, he wanted to stand up for the boy in the flashback, so it's not like he's entirely a dick. It's very confusing on what this character actually is like, and since that's a huge part of the episode, it also suffers. Episode 77, The SMG4 Weight Losers. SMG4 introduces a weight loss program. This is also a short, this time being in the form of a commercial. Aside from the toad dragging people away running gag and Mario being weighed, however, not a lot of jokes really work. It's just your typical commercial jabs about the satisfied customers and the product not working with some pizza cutter edgy joke thrown in. All in all, it's a meh, as it's not memorable outside of a few funny moments. 
Episode 78, Peach's Love. Mario needs help to ask Peach out. Here we get yet another episode involving Peach that has to do with Mario asking her out. Where have I seen this one before? Even the potion Mario gives to Peach goes wrong, not unlike Awkward Weddings. The big issue here is that the second half with Peach being the horrific being she turns into has very little to do with the first half. The solution to get Peach back doesn't even involve Mario confessing to her, SMG4 just shoots her in the ass with an arrow. This gets a meh as the first half, while very similar to other love-themed episodes, is nice to see. I just wish the second half wasn't so out of nowhere. Episode 79, A Murder Without Peach. When Peach leaves the castle, someone gets murdered and Mario has to find out who did it. With the title being how it is, this is a spiritual successor to A Day Without Peach, which involved a lot of Mario and Toad partying and doing stupid shit while Peach is gone. This takes that and runs with it, adding an element of murder mystery to the mix. And it's done amazingly. A Day Without Peach is one of the first truly great SMG4 episodes, and this also fits that rating. It is so consistently funny, and while the murder part peters out once X, who is finally back, is revealed to be the killer in favor of a city chase, that whole last segment is one of my favorite SMG4 bits ever. A decent trade-off. Yeah, the very end feels a bit rushed, but it's not nearly noticeable enough to bring this episode down a peg. A very, very good episode that I come back to so many times. Episode 80, Party Rock Prisoners. Mario and Toad have to escape prison. From one classic to another. Actually, this has more in common with A Day Without Peach than the last episode does, as we get Mario and Toad throughout the entire episode. This one takes crime time and replaces Luigi with Toad, which isn't a huge difference, barring some jokes about Toad being short, but we also get a hell of a lot more focus on the prison part. It's your classic breakout of jail episode, with secret plans, air ducts, and one final chase to end it all off. Almost every joke is a hit, and it's a blast to watch again. Party Rock Prisoners is another episode I come back to see every once in a while, and that vending machine gag never fails to put a smile on my face. Episode 81, The Warrior and the Hobo. Mario and SMG4 get teleported to a different world where they have to save it. And we're back to some subpar episodes. Now, I'll go more in depth about this topic when we cover a certain other episode, but lots of the jokes here are rather problematic. And it's a much bigger issue here than all the other episodes in this season, which had some offensive jokes and traits, as the characters that these jokes are used on are a significant part of the story. Something about them speaking in a simplified manner, and what they're referred to as being a punchline, it just doesn't sit right with me. Already a scum 64, but in addition to that, we also get a surprisingly bland take on the fantasy setting. Barely any jokes stick, which makes the story a slog, but this episode also has very many story issues. A very many. Barely any time is spent dealing with the actual dragon they were supposed to beat, but turns out the village was destroyed anyways, and the journey was pointless. Even the zombie scene feels out of place with how it doesn't connect to all the other places in this alternate world. The pipe tower is out of nowhere, and the villagers make no reference to the town where the zombies are. The villagers even turn on Mario and SMG4 just because this random toad raised some questions about if Mario is the warrior. I could get it if there were more doubts among the villagers, but Toad is just there and he's given no higher authority than the other villagers, so why do they take his word so seriously? X shows up out of nowhere to save them from the zombies, but he leaves right after and he didn't get all the zombies. Good god, this is such a mess of an episode, and the only part I liked wasn't even all that funny, it was just neat to see zombies. I feel like I'm watching the SMG4 equivalent to a slice of Swiss cheese, there's just an uncomfortable amount of holes in it. The Warrior and the Hobo already had issues with its featured characters and its bland presentation, but all of these plot holes are just too much to ignore for me. Episode 82, SMG3's plan to destroy SMG4 because he felt like it. SMG3 returns to try and beat SMG4, and this time he has help from other villains in the series. This is a simple, campy, villainy plot that I think is needed every now and then. It's really cool to see all these separate villains be in the same room together. Now, 
I do think more could have been done with all their traits, maybe flesh out the rift between SMG3 and his fellow villains and have that be the main conflict. Still, it's a very fun episode that included basically every villain that's ever been in an SMG4 episode to this point, so I'm not complaining. Episode 83, World of Craftmine. Mario and SMG4 get sent into the world of Minecraft. Here we get yet another fairly popular episode. This time because it's Minecraft. I really like the addition of Steve, and having him not have dialogue is really interesting. He provides a ton of visual humor not really seen too often. Yeah, they're background gags, but they're good background gags. I also really like to see Mario and SMG4 have to put aside their differences and work together to survive in this world. Obviously this is a good episode, and it's so nice hearing revenge. Episode 84, Mario's Guide to Defeating Bowser 2.0. Mario gives more tips and tricks to defeat Bowser. This is clearly a remake of the first guide to defeating Bowser, and I gotta say, this does that concept way better. The punchlines are less predictable, and as such, means it's not as boring. Also, the improved editing makes a difference too. A good episode that redeems a previously mediocre one. Episode 85, the lie that was the cake that is a lie. A remake of the very first SMG4 episode. Like the confusing title says, it's another remake of a very early episode, and again, it's done well. It's not super funny, but it's a charming update on the episode that started it all. Fun fact, I think this is the first episode I watched of this series, like, ever, so this has a good bit of nostalgia for me. Episode 86, Senmanar, 1000 subs. To celebrate 1000 subs, SMG4 puts together a compilation of random segments. This is yet another start of a miniseries on this channel. Most of these videos aren't meant to craft a plot or develop characters, it's just to tell a bunch of random jokes. Not a lot stick for this episode, though, which is why I'm giving it a meh. I liked the shower gag, the little pirate number, and a few others, but not much else. This is the first in the series, however, so I'll give it a little bit of leeway. Episode 87, 0% of Spaghetti. Mario runs out of spaghetti, so he and SMG4 have to find some. This is the big one. The main course. The episode I've been wanting to review for a very long time. If you don't know, this is one of my first experiences with SMG4 I've had, and for a long time was my favorite episode of all time. I am very nostalgic for 0% of spaghetti, and for good reason. It's an appealing plot. Mario's relationship with Spaghetti is only really played up for laughs, and while this episode is by no means a serious one, it does make the entire plot about his Spaghetti habits. Plus, the tense yet funny final act is a really memorable part. I like that, and I like this episode. It's good, but not without its problems, however. For starters, Mario's supposed craziness goes away after that scene in the castle. Could this episode have been even better with Mario's sanity being chipped away every minute? Possibly, and I can't help but think the opportunity was a bit wasted. The other problem is, uh... Yeah, it's time to address the elephant in the room. I've mentioned it before, and I gave a little bit of detail in my review of a previous episode, but considering 0% of spaghetti was privated because of it last year, I think it's time we talk about the presence of the edgy jokes in this season. The reason this episode was taken off the channel, and why I had to track down to re-upload, was a joke around the 9 minute mark, where Mario shoots someone for a reason I'm not going to say, but it's done in a way where it can be considered racist. I don't think it was to intentionally be hurtful, as it could just be a delivery error considering how the unknown characters are portrayed as shadowy figures, and Mario says he was looking for ninjas. Also, I do respect the decision to take the episode down. It does take a lot of courage for someone to take one of their projects off the public stage, especially considering it's one of the more popular videos from this era of SMG4. That being said, if taken at face value, that gag sure seems pretty offensive. Considering that joke is the primary reason the episode was taken down, it's safe to assume that even if it wasn't intentional, it's a bad look. It does bring down the episode. It may not seriously affect the plot and the other traits in the episode, as it's just so out of place from the rest of it that it just comes completely out of left field, but that's the thing. 
Reviewing these episodes as a whole means you gotta include everything, so while I do acknowledge that the joke is only a small fraction of the runtime and has zero impact on the pacing or the jokes outside of the scene, I can't just cut that part out of the episode review just because I don't like it. And these offensive jokes just feel really unnecessary. Why do these jokes need to be included? Aside from being funny, which I personally don't find it to be, I know it can be argued that it's meant to portray Mario and the others as idiots and incompetent. Why though? You can have a character be a complete dumbass or a real villain without having them do these stupid, not cool jokes. We get that Mario is bad at sneaking around, and you can show that through plenty of funnier and more creative ways than what he did in the episode. Mario's an idiot, he doesn't need to be potentially racist as well. Now, how much should the joke affect your enjoyment of the episode? As for my perspective, it definitely does hamper the enjoyment of the overall episode. It's not cool, it's not funny, and it's delivered pretty poorly if it wasn't intended to be that way. It doesn't affect how the rest of the episode functions, however, as you can take out that 10 second part and the episode would basically be the same. If that joke wasn't present, I think it would still have a few issues, but it would still be much better than it is right now just on account of how bad the joke is. I still think the episode is good, as the base episode feels like it's good, and there's still lots of good jokes and that farmer's market scene, which aren't problematic, but man, things would have just been so much simpler if that joke just didn't make it into the final cut. Episode 88, Herobrine. Mario and SMG4 get chased by Herobrine. This is another Minecraft episode, this time really leaning into the Mario and SMG4 dynamic. They need each other's help in this world, and it's shown in this episode. It's a very cool, intense chase throughout the night, as the tone it sets is one of my favorite of the series so far, which makes it pretty good. The boss music going on and on while they run in terror from this crazed man, all in the beautiful Minecraft night, it's a surprisingly cool episode to watch. Granted, it's not super funny, but the slapstick that does work, works pretty well. Episode 89 the elevator. Mario Luigi gets stuck inside an elevator. If there's one word I can use to describe this episode, it's frustrating. All the characters other than Luigi are just being complete dumbasses for most of the episode. Mario especially, like in the phone interaction. It just seems so forced to have Mario use Luigi's phone for something dumb just to extend the plot further. And we even get the classic, there was something here this whole time which would have helped us. It's a scum 64 with all that, but also there's that really abrupt ending. It feels very rushed, and since we know SMG4's reaction earlier in the episode, the ending gag is completely predictable. Episode 90, Join the Evil Side. SMG3 wants you to join the dark side. Another commercial, another mad episode. This one is actually close to being good, as I did enjoy everything going wrong for SMG3 at the end, but... The rest was mostly just kind of bland. Not much else to say here. Episode 91, SMG4 joins the YTR. SMG4 joins the YouTube Rangers, which makes Mario jealous. I like this one, as it has an interesting idea. Mario, feeling left out, obviously wants to join the club, but predictably, he's not allowed. Lots of the jokes work, and it's a fun little journey having Mario try and think of different ways to get in. I do think it needed more time to do, as the ending seemed a bit rushed, but other than that, this is a good episode. It reminds me of Master of Failed Disguises with the attempts to break into the club. Episode 92, The Imposter. SMG3 hires a mysterious guy to try and take out SMG4 and the gang. This is a nice and suspenseful episode throughout most of the runtime. It does lack a few things that I gotta vent about, though. Mario is again stupid just for the sake of moving along the plot, which is kinda getting old. Also, how would Starman know about a potential imposter based off of MM and Mario's actions, which don't seem all that suspicious from those characters? It does have a few jokes among the first part, but once the chase starts happening, it really dies down. I'm feeling a meh on this report, as a mix of a standard chase scene and contrived plot points make this episode suffer from major cooldown after the cast finds out who the imposter is. Episode 93, Starman gets 5,000 subs. Mario and the gang hold a celebration for Starman. 
I feel bored watching this party take place. It's not super funny, but at least something more should have been done with the characters getting ready for the party and whatnot. The only conflict here is SMG4 sending Mario out to do stuff like send the invitations or get a cake and every time you know Mario is going to mess it up. It's a very predictable story and since not much else happens in the episode, I have to give it a scum 64. Episode 94, Chinese Elves and Gay Cashiers. Mario and SMG4 get stuck at Kokiri Forest and have to escape. Wow, we actually get some more continuity from Clone O Mario. Good choice of an episode, as I like it here. The characters that SMG4 and Mario encounter are pretty cool for this time period of bloopers. The running gag of Mario setting things on fire was pretty nice, and the ending, although stupid, was kind of funny. The two actually interact with the setting, and that's interesting. This episode is just pleasant. Episode 95, The Nether. Mario and SMG4 explore the Nether, where they are joined by Starman. Starman is now in this miniseries for some reason. It doesn't really add much aside from another moderating voice in the group. This episode is a mad mostly because it combines really interesting parts with really boring ones. On one hand, that four minute stretch where they're just aimlessly exploring the nether with that music that gets kinda grating after a while is a slog to watch. However, the hunt for the nether ward is a really fun climax, so with both of those parts of the episode, it evens out and we get a meh out of it. Episode 96, The Monster. The monster from Babysitters makes a return, so Mario and the gang have to stop it. We've seen the monster come back before, but this one really puts a focus on him again. And in a good way too, as it's a simple yet well put together episode. Lots of jokes work, like everything that happens in the village, and the quote-unquote wizard that SMG gets to try and revive the monster. There's also some decently high stakes here, and it's not wasted. Not much else happens outside of the monster in the fight against it, but that's okay. It's a basic premise, and it doesn't waste time with a whole other concept halfway through. It's all about the monster and stopping it from destroying the kingdom. Obviously, this is a good episode. It keeps the simplistic plots of last season, but with the fresher editing and jokes, which makes it really nice to watch. Episode 97, My Best Friend Slenderman. Mario befriends the man, the myth, the legend, Slenderman. Ah, this era of the internet. Here, Mario tries to convince everybody that his new friend, Slenderman, isn't as evil as he seems, and it's kinda heartwarming seeing what Mario is willing to do for him. Although, it is very funny seeing everyone's reaction to Slenderman trying to socialize, especially when he approaches Enzo, which is one of my favorite jokes of this season. We also get a funny little fake out at the end where there's a funeral right after the Slendercopter crash, but it's not Slenderman that died. That was kinda clever, and it was a nice ending to a pretty good episode. It combines the nice dynamic between Slenderman and Mario with a lot of jokes. Episode 98, The Pink Problem. SMG4's gloves turn pink in the washers, so he needs new ones. Does this episode's format seem familiar? SMG4 loses something important to him, his clean, not pink gloves, and has to look for it with Mario and Starman 3. They go to the farmer's market to look for new gloves, but they're fresh out of stock, and a guy walking out has the last pair. They follow him around until they finally try and take it from him, which causes a big chasing at the end. Yeah, this episode is really similar to 0% of Spaghetti, except this time, SMG4 is the one doing the searching. It does do the concept better than 0% did, but still, it is virtually the same plot. However, this does a few things differently. Obviously, the bank scene is one of them, but this whole episode has a more hectic and silly feeling to it. Mario going without his precious spaghetti is something slightly more serious because that's one of his main character traits, whereas the whole tone around the pink gloves is way more lax, with everyone laughing at him and whatnot. The bank scene is a really solid part of the episode, lots of the jokes stick, and while it's predictable, the way the ending is set up is really funny with how SMG4 cautiously asks Mario where his hat is. It's a good episode, and what that does a little more with this specific kind of story. Episode 99, Befriend the End. Mario and the gang get transported to the end and have to find their way out. Last episode. This is a pretty suspenseful tone for an episode, but I like it. It's a cool setting and an even cooler antagonist. 
It has some good jokes, and while a couple aren't quite as good, the tone is what keeps me coming. It's a good episode. I like seeing Mario and the others try and be sneaky towards the beginning, not wanting to draw attention to the dragon. It loses steam towards the end, but that stretch in the middle is a really good stretch. Decent way to end off the season. And that was every episode of SMG4 Season 2 Reviewed. Let's look at the episode chart. As you can see, we have 32 good episodes, 11 meh episodes, and 7 scum 64 episodes. Those meh episodes being Mario Takes the Idiot Test, the Switcheroo Overalls, Hunt for the Hero's Clothes, Wallets and Dinosaurs, The Mushroom Mafia, The SMG4 Weight Losers, Pichoso Love, Sinma Nar 1, Join the Evil Side, The Imposter, and The Nether. And those seven Scum 64 episodes were How Mario Was Born, Orbital Adventures, Desert Head, Thugger Hugger, The Warrior and the Hobo, The Elevator, and Starman Gets 5,000 Subs. When we compared this chart to one of the previous season, they look very similar. A few less goods and a few more mehs in Scum 64s, but not something super noticeable. This season had a lot in common with Season 1 in the first half. Kinda simple editing and a lot of the same plots. Where this season really starts to divert is about when the babysitters come into the mix. You get episodes like A Murder Without Peach with its usage of X the Villain and the really cool murder mystery. There's Party Rock Prisoners which takes crime time, makes it more about the prison part, and becomes really good as a result of that. However, you also have the confusing character of DP and Thugger Hucker, the awkward feeling of the elevator, and the really poorly written warrior in the hobo. This stretch of episodes really differentiated it from Season 1. It took more risks, it stopped relying so heavily on Season 1's plots, and sometimes it worked, and other times it didn't. But, I mean, hey, some of these episodes were more interesting than many of them in Season 1. As for some random things I took notes on throughout the season, here's three of them. 1. I noticed a lot of plots revolving around either identity or changing form in the first part of the season. Many Italians, SMG4 vs SMG3, both the Peach-centric episodes, it's something really noticeable once I paid attention to it. 2. Yeah, the offensive jokes. They were present in the first season, but I noticed a lot more of them in season 2. Most are just one-off gags that don't normally affect the episode, so it's not a super big deal, but still. I'd prefer if they weren't there. And three, the font took a while to change. Ariel Nova was first in the blooper competition all the way back in season one, but we didn't see it again until Breaking Walls, and even then it wasn't a mainstay in the episodes until The Warrior and the Hobo. I wonder why it switched back to the regular font after those episodes. Finally, let's talk about the top and bottom fives of the season. These aren't final and will likely change in the future, but for now, here they are. Starting off on the bottom five, we have number five, Orbical Adventures. It's a pointless journey that has all the bad parts of early SMG4. Number four, Desert Head. This episode was very confused on if it wanted to be a desert episode or a game show episode, and it fails at both. Number three, The Elevator. Mario's a dumbass and the episode really doesn't want to do other things. Number two, Thugger Hugger. DP is such a poorly written character, it's enough to bring this episode this high in the list. And number one, The Warrior and the Hobo. Shit writing, shit jokes, shit episode. Anyways, now for the top five. Number five, The Babysitters. Serious in a good way. Number four, Herobrine. Suspenseful, funny, and has a wonderful atmosphere. Number three, A Murder Without Peach. One of the more experimental episodes, and with how funny and interesting it is, it works out. Number two, The Crazy Fighters. A true classic from this era that feels like the culmination of the first 60 or so episodes. And my favorite episode of Season 2 of SMG4 is... Party Rock Prisoners. What can I say? It's crime time with a fresh coat of paint, and I'm in love. So, the season. It's safe to assume that Season 2 of SMG4 is a good season. It's Season 1, but with higher highs and roughly the same level of lows. This is really where SMG4 starts getting interesting, and lots of these episodes are worth actually going back and watching. The good episodes obviously outweighed everything else, but 
Even the worst episodes weren't as bad as the best ones were good, so it's an all-around improvement on Season 1. If the 2011 episodes were a bit simple for you, check out some of the later episodes in Season 2. It livens up a lot of what Season 1 did. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I've been working hard to get this out in time, so I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to talk about the episodes in the comments. Do you think I got these ratings spot on? Or do you have a different view on some of these? This is Wemple Lombardi, signing off.